Okay, guys, welcome to the Mary Boozer's channel. This is Piper Boozer with you. Uh, Wesley and I have uh, been talking about the repaint of the Free Wing 80 millimeter A10, which is behind me. Uh, this is going to be Papa's first repaint or paint job on a foam airplane, so kind of excited to do that. We will start with removing all the insignias off of this particular aircraft. I'll uh, show you how to, I, I don't know exactly what to expect guys, I've never taken them off. So uh, let me experiment and I'll be back with you and try to show you what I'm doing. Okay guys, so what I've kind of experienced here when I'm first trying to take off the, uh, the decals is exactly what I thought you'd be doing is uh, get you a hobby knife and uh, start by peeling it up and then be very slow coming off and I have not had too much paint peel off or foam come up so I think the biggest secret here is just be very slow as you go to remove the insignia be back with it and, and we'll show you like this one right here I'll show you this one I've, I've removed it here and I'm taking it off very slowly and these might be uh, uh, not the typical stickers but as you can tell I took that one off and no paint removal on that so I'm trying to have a good success so far okay so we're gonna try some of these insignias on the back again your hobby knife I hope you can see but just barely put it under the these and they just come right off without any paint removal. How good is that? So here we go again. These are not very well stuck on as you can tell. Uh, so, uh, so far, not too hard to remove these particular stickers on this particular jet so this works fine is what i'm trying to show you so we'll be back to you okay all. so i've uh, pretty much removed all the insignias from this side of the aircraft as you can tell and i'm look here i did remove some of them are better stickers than others uh this came out pretty well I'm, I'm happy guys as long as I'm not pulling up foam and just pulling up paint and, it, and I can smooth it out with a little sanding never see that where you want to stay away from I'm gonna guess is actually pulling the foam where you're coming out with chunks of foam that's a no-no take your time if you remove the paint fine now another thing is that uh, we have elected to do this particular paint scheme. Everybody's kind of probably maybe seen that. If you can look at that. What I would suggest to you, we ordered the graphics from Cali Graphics. And I've got them here on the table. What, what I was looking at, and maybe a good suggestion to you, is sometimes if you're going to do the graphics, like this particular insignia right here, since the the devil will be going over him okay so this big devil will be going up here on the front side so why remove that who cares there's going to be another insignia so guys don't go to too much extremes and remove too many if you don't have to so um uh, that's what i'm saying to you right at the present moment where i've got to so be back to you when we get to another okay, segment. Guys, Papa has found out something kind of interesting. On some of these insignias, like the one you're looking at, it is not easy to take off. It'd be like this one over here, this one right here. I think these were installed at the factory. But I have found out if you will outline it with your hobby knife instead of trying to pick it up like I did here on this edge. You see that edge right there where I've really jaggered it up? Well, I found out if you will take your hobby knife and go around the outside. I did it on this piece. Looks what happens when you do that. Bingo. So, 
the secret to these type of patches to take them off is outline them with your hobby knife and look what happens okay look at this other than look at how easy that was but if you just try to sit there and pick and pick and pick on it all you're going to do is do this but if you outline it look what happens so something new so that might be a suggestion but when I tried to pick this up, it looked like they had been stuck on and then painted around. So, anyway, uh, there's your suggestion of how to take these things up. Outline them with your hobby Okay, guys, knife. Papa's learning as he goes. I took this insignia off really slow and thought I was taking it off without the paint. But at the same time, I was pulling the paint up, as you can see. So there's only one really way to take that off is what I did was take my hobby knife and cut on each side of it, as you can see, and I'd rather do that than have that bubbled up paint. Okay? So it's as easy as you try to take them off, guys. This paint is only stuck so much to that foam, and no matter how easy you take them off, the paint is going to detach from the foam. Uh, I don't know of any way out of, out of this. So, uh, uh, like I say, I'm learning as I go. So I hope you're kind of going to learn too. Okay, guys. Again, as I told you, that I outlined uh, some of these ones that's really stuck on. It's I think they're factory. But what I did was outlined it with my hobby knife, and let's see what happens when I do it. Bingo. So live and learn. That's the best I've found because if you if you try to pull this up, it just the paint will unstick from the foam. And if even if the paint's there, it's got bubbles under it. So I'm thinking the best thing you can do is do the, the cutting of the hobby knife and pull it off that way, and you're better off, hopefully. So anyway. Well, okay guys fine. overall all the decals that I want to take off I've taken them off not too bad uh, the biggest secret I think I found in taking off decals if you've got the ones that's really stuck outline it with your exacto knife and they come off a lot better I didn't peel any foam uh, uh, my next project will probably be uh, scuffing up the uh, where I'm gonna paint I'm going to use like a real light sandpaper and scuff up the paint so it will, the other paint will uh, adhere to this paint that's on the plane. Uh, Wesley and I have talked about it, uh, this airplane, what we will do, we're, we're going to do the, uh, we're going to rattle can it with the uh, olive drab on top. Uh, of course, another thing you want to make sure you do before you start painting is you've got to clean all the oil or grease off your hands. So make sure you're going to use some kind of uh, paint. Yeah, that's another thing I don't know about, but we'll test that one out and tell you what I find out is what I use to clean the paint with. First, I will sand it. That'll clean it to a certain extent. Then right before I decide to paint it, I will clean it again. Uh, Wesley and I have decided since uh, it's got the gray on the bottom and the, and the olive drab on top and it's kind of kind of got a wavy line here what Papa's gonna do is he's gonna just spray it and then we'll come back with our airbrush and add the waves into it and it also has it on the top of the wing so the better plan be back. All right guys, so now that we've got all the insignias off, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna, there's a few uh, dings on the wings where they've scraped the wings. So I'm gonna use some spackling. This, uh, it's fast and final, lightweight spackling. They do make a hobby grade of this, but uh, no more than what I have here. So I'm gonna go through the airplane wherever I need to add a little bit of this to fill whole. And then the next thing I'll do after this dries is I'll do a light sanding and should be ready to paint. I 
I really don't think I'm going to tear the plane apart to paint it, but we'll see uh, as it comes about. But uh, that's our next step, spackling and, and some uh, light sanding. So far, I haven't run into anything that, I, that has been really difficult. Uh, where I'm at now is that I had previously added the spackling to places that needed a little repair since this was a used plane. Uh, it had a real big scrape of this wing. So I just formed it up on this wing. I haven't started sanding it yet. If you can see that, this was, had been hit on a pavement. Uh, the other thing that I have done is that in places like where I've taken this out, just to give it a little bit more adhesion, I just took a thin layer of this and run it over this and maybe that will give it, a, instead of just the bare foam, a little bit of, uh, uh, I won't really sand real hard. So I've done that, just run a real thin layer over that. Uh, you can also see on this wing here where I took the insignia off, you can see where I've run just a little bit of that on the wing maybe, on where I took that off. And I also did it on here and up here. This was really, uh, guys, this uh, jet is uh, not a, a real difficult one to do because of the, it's got primer on it really with just gray. So uh, the next step I'm going to do is lightly sand the surfaces that will, I will be painting, which will be the top, top of the wing and the side of the fuse. So I'll be back to you as soon as I do a little sanding. Hey guys, I just wanted to give you just a little bit of uh, upgrade on this sanding thing that I might think you would be interested in. You know the mold marks that's left behind, the little dots? Uh, maybe you can see it uh, right there. You can pretty, pretty well see it. I, I, it's up to you whether you want to remove them or not. Uh, they move, remove rather easily. Uh, I am going to do the ones on the top. I'm not going to worry about the bottom. Uh, but they do remove uh, rather easily with your sandpaper. So uh, it's up to you. But I'm going to take them off because they kind of look a little... So you can see them all. Right there's another one. They're all over. But mostly, if you, I've sanded this wing here, this, this here. And you can see how smooth that's came out. I uh, won't have any... Uh, differences where it goes from the paint to the where it was the insignia but I've also removed them you can see where I there's one that that's not removed all the way but uh, up to you uh, but Papa will be removing these as much as possible thought Back I'd give you, you just a little bit of my sanding process remember guys all we're doing is to politely scratch up the paint for it Adhesion, unless you are trying to clean up some kind of dent or thing, you know, there isn't any, you, you can go this way, you can go that way. Uh, what I will do, I, I'm using 150 right now, but the last thing I'll, I'll probably use a real fine uh, to get the, if I have any scratches, I'll use something like a 100 to, for the last sanding. Uh, uh, another requirement that you have to have is a uh, Papa Dots shirt, t-shirt to sand in. It's a real requirement, guys. You got to have one of these. So go on Teesprings and look for our store and uh, buy you a, a Boozer shirt so you can do this correctly because you can't do it without a, without a shirt. So anyway, you know, here it is. Good luck. guys I thought this would be interesting a lot of you guys uh, would be wanting to know where I make all the artwork for the t-shirts and the a2 patches well this is my workroom we actually did a video of the boozers the history of the boozers in this room but just to give you an idea of where Papa works uh, to do the video the the patches and stuff that that's actually my father's World War II uniform 
and some uh, survival maps that I've collected over the years. So anyway, there's where he does all the, the patches from. If you wanted one, there's one in progress right there on the table. So just a little extra. All right, guys. Uh, been on the jet for several hours as far as the sanding. I cannot get over to you enough that prep time is everything. The, the more you prep, the better your job will be. Now, I might go to extreme as far as how long I've sanded on this airplane, but again, the two major things gonna take me the most time on one of these, I can already tell you, will be the, the sanding and the probably the masking off of the area that is going to be painted or that I don't want to be painted. So again, prep is going to take you the most time. So take your time. Thank you. Okay, guys. So we prepared the jet. We've got it all sanded down. Uh, the first thing I did was the cockpit area. I just used the regular Scotch uh, blue lined tape for that because it will come off of plastic. So just a regular old Scotch 3M fine line tape. Find it anywhere. Now, on the back, since I wanted to do the bottom side first, which is the hard part, I didn't want to get any on the bottom of the uh, horizontal stabilizer on the back. And I run at this at, at uh, school supply, so I'd, we're going to see how this works. But I found this scotch tape in the school supply section that says wall safe tape. Now, that's what I have applied to the leading edge here. So we're going to find out if it pulls off without pulling up any of the foam. So we will try that right now. So let's see how it works. I think it works pretty well, guys. Now, well, I got a little pull there on that. Kind of hard to try to pull this when you're trying to video at the same time. But I think we're going to be successful with that tape. So as you can well see that I did that on the bottom. And I didn't have any pull marks missed a place there. We'll touch that up. But you can see. So uh, again, looks like it will work. Again, the scotch. I found that in the school section. Wall safe scotch tape says also post-it technology all right so we've got the bottom and the, the cells painted and the kind of right here we'll touch up a little bit of that here in a minute and then we'll keep continue to paint the bottom side does not get painted guys okay uh, only the top will be olive drab so on with the show okay so i think everybody knows how to do a canopy but anyway if you don't uh, you take your blue I've, I've already peeled some of it off we painted the canopy but at, you, you very meticulously take your blue tape uh, and I took an exacto knife and ran it around the edges to to try to get me a nice smooth edge so and then all you have to do after that is you come in here and pick it up like this and remove it like that. Now, you're probably going to have some, you can come back with your, your uh, paint if you don't get it all the way to the edge with a brush and clean up these edges. You're just trying to do it the best you can here, guys. When you use an exacto knife, sometimes you're not exactly where you want it to be, but that's okay. Pull it off. Don't leave this tape on too long because it can get, but you can see the idea when, and the, you, I'm going to bring it real. If you can see this right here, what I'll do is I'll come back with a paintbrush, take some of this paint and I'll clean up the lines. 
So that's about how easy it is to do the, the canopy, guys. But it comes out really nice. I, I didn't even, I, this is where I tested my paint before I started. Good, good rule of thumb on your rattle cans. Take you an area that uh, you know that nobody will see and, and test your paint before you start painting to make sure it is foam safe. All right, guys. Okay, so after we remove the, uh, the servo rods, which I did, that's the only two I removed, and I taped over the balls. I sprayed, I didn't want to see the servos, so I sprayed over the servos, that won't hurt them a bit. Taped around the exhaust ducts here. But not a whole lot of taping, guys. I didn't tape uh, on these wings. I, I just shot them from straight up. Hopefully it doesn't get on the bottom. Of course, I put the fuse back on it, took that off. We'll clean up around these lines. And we're pretty much done, other than I think we're going to take now... We'll take it over to Wesley's and we'll, we'll do the wavy lines with the airbrush on the bottom here and on the wing and it's got a wavy line here. So we'll take some gray and we'll do that and we're, we're through guys. Uh, turned out to be, now the only thing I want to really warn you about is make sure your surface is clean. What I did after the sanding, after I washed it off with water. I took and lightly wiped it down with paint thinner. Believe it or not, I don't drown it. Just lightly wash it off with paint thinner. Make sure the grease is off of it. That's all I'm doing to make sure the paint adheres to the finish of the old paint. Uh, didn't have too many bad things about peeling up where the old stickers came off. Uh, I'll probably shoot a few more uh, coats where the stickers were that's kind of got the the uh, foam showing through a little bit more than where the paint was. But other than that, guys, I'm really tickled to death with how it come out to look. Uh, uh, next will be, I guess, the airbrushing that we'll show you from Wesley's. And then the next step will be to put the insignia on. We're, we've got this thing whipped. So... Uh, We'll uh, look forward to seeing when we do the air. Okay, guys, I've got her out in the sun, letting her dry, get a good, good heat to it, and that'll make it dry quicker. But one of the other things it does do that I recommend, if you're out in the sun, you can see any imperfections in your paint. So this is where you need to see, look down at it, see if you see anything that you don't like, because even a car painter will take their paint job out in the sun to see what the the imperfections the only thing i see is there's some gray showing through some of the panel lines here other than that i'm pleased with what i see so just another tip get it out in the sunshine you'll see a lot more of your errors out here than you will in the house or under artificial light sorry guys i did all the painting i forgot to tell you about what kind of paint i used I uh, didn't have no problem, foam safe, uh, Rust-Oleum, camouflage, it says 2X Ultra Cover, non-reflective finish, ultra flat color, any angle spray, worked great. And this one is Deep Forest Green, is what I used on there, Deep Forest Green. So just so you know what I used to paint it. Uh, uh, so. Maybe that's good information for okay, you. Okay guys, so we're looking at this aircraft that has the invasion stripes on it, both on the nacelles and the wings. If you look, there are three whites and two black, which makes five. So what we've done here on this, we, I'm first setting out the distance to get the five stripes. So what we have to figure out is to get the five stripes to have them somewhere close to where they are on the aircraft. So with a little bit of mathematics, we figured out that I would make the stripes one and three quarter inches wide. So I'd use this line here, this panel line. If you'll notice, there's a dot that starts right here. That would be the first one. 
one, two, three, four, five. Now, for reference, I got to leave, uh, so I've got to cut the invasion stripes off equally before I get to the 100 years. So what I decided to do is go ahead and put the 100 years on, and I'm using the panel line on the bottom here to keep it straight, as you can see. So if we, and another thing guys, if you have a Lazy Susan or something that you can rotate your jet around like I am doing, makes your life a lot easier. So if you see here, I haven't got the 100 years on that. I laid out the stripes again, where they will be uh, uh, to the same distance was on the other one. So we get them correctly. Use the same line or the same rivet line those halfway and use that as the reference. Now, uh, what I tell you to do is make sure you stick these down very well and take your time taking these off because they will peel up. I wish I could show you that, but uh, I think you guys get the idea how to put these on. Uh, take your time, get them pressed down. Wesley likes to use a heat iron. I don't happen to have one here, but I will Possibly, I just want to get these on to start painting the lines, the, the invasion stripes. So, uh, that's how I laid that out. Uh, when we get to the wing here, I'll show you how to lay that out. I'm going to use this line here to mark the distance because it's the straight line. Straightest line to keep the marks, uh, you know, it, uh, straight. Okay, you want to... You want to make sure the lines are straight pretty well with the wing. So we'll see what we do with this one. We're, we're, we're going to work on the nacelles first. So we are now to the invasion stripes and how to set those up. If you look at the picture of the airplane, which I'll bring up here right at the present moment, you will see that the invasion stripes on the wing are from the pod to the ailerons where, where the ailerons start so what you have to do is you can already see i've laid it out with a uh, magic marker but it's rather simple what you do is you take some kind of a measuring device and you measure what the uh, width of that flat, that, uh, that, that will be your, uh, uh, air brake, which you can see it's eight inches. But it's a little less than eight inches if you if you look at the straight here if you were to do eight inches you'd run into the pod out here on this end here so i took a little bit less than that i think i took seven and three quarter let's see what that would be yeah seven and three quarter and i did divided it by five and came out with an inch and a half so each one of the widths of each stripe, I have to have five stripes. If you noticed in the picture, there's three, three white, two black, being that there's five. So if you look here, there's one, two, three, four, five, being that. So, inch and a half apart, you put your, your measuring device what I did was actually start from and get the straightest line which would be this line to be make sure that it comes out straight on the wing so you use this line to do the measuring so with your I started out here with this and measured an inch and a half and put a dot on each one of those lines okay after I got the inch and a half there to keep the 
line straight, what I did was come out here with a, 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 t a square with that, keeping this in line here with this, and made another mark here. And then did that all the way through. Then I took a flexible, you can tell this is a hard flexible sump, and I took it where it would be on the wing, and I marked that from there to there, and marked me a line. And I did that all the way through, and then I put this, since this would have been straight here, then I finished it off down here on this end. And as you can see, hopefully you can see that they would be straight with the wing. Uh, so I did the same thing on the other side. And now that's as far as I got. Now I'm, I'm going to turn the airplane over and do it on the bottom side. That, that is the wing, how I set up the wing. The pods are going to be a little bit more difficult, but you will use the inch and a half spacing. It would look, look a little funny, guys, if you, had, if you decided to do two inch up here and an inch and a half here, it wouldn't look correct. So if you figured this out, then you're gonna use the inch and a half here on this pod. So we'll do that later. But that's how I set up the wing on the invasion stripes. Painting will come next. Last thing to mention, guys, since I did, this will not go all the way through. One, two, three, four, five. So this will not be painted from here to there. Why? Because I had to miss the pod. You wouldn't want to paint this. So we come out as close as we could not hitting that pod so that was just something else I forgot to mention to you so we're on the bottom of the wing using the same tools that we did on the top the measuring stick the cardboard that it cardboard you cut it straight you have a straight edge that bends guys and then of course we have the square where we use the same thing to keep the lines straight as we come off of using this. We know that that is straight if we line that up to the bottom of that, correct? So, go through the process. Same thing on the bottom wing. Starting from here, one, two, three, four, five. Being that I've marked it white, black, white, black, white and we have it and it should come out the same on the front of the wing as it does on the top of the wing I have not drawn it in yet but that being it will be straight uh, so that's how I laid that out big thing guys wings are not completely flat so use a flexible thing to mark your lines and uh, all I did was mark the line with a Sharpie because I haven't actually figured out what process we're going to paint the stripes on. If you was in World War II, the mechanic would have used a paintbrush and you could paint it on there. Of course, this jet is was, I'm almost positive we're going to have to use the airbrush to come out with the look we want. Uh... You know, here's a good view of the bottom of the wing that I did not even, you know, the, the other jet, but I kind of like this look, this, uh, where it just matches it, it fades in, didn't use anything to do that guy, but just rattle can. So anyway, there's what we did with the setting up of the invasion stripes. Next will be the ones I think on I've the decided how to paint the stripes on. We'll probably use the airbrush. Cut up some strips of paper like I'm showing you here with the two pieces of cardboard and tape them down without using any anything like that on, on the straight edge lines. And with the airbrushing, you can pretty well have overspray and it will look correct. So I'm, I'm 
almost positive we will be doing the airbrushing on the invasion stripes. It just makes it a lot better and you're going to get the look that I want that has no brush strokes in it. Okay, uh, so we're here on the engine pods and we're laying out the invasion stripes. As you can tell on the picture, you can tell the spacing here. You can tell that it, it's a little bit past the 100 and a little bit past the uh, years. So I have determined, if you remember from the first, on the layout on the wings, that I determined that the stripes were one and a half. To do this on here, I have determined that I need it to be one and three quarter to get the spacing here. And to get the spacing correct here, to miss this was one and a half. So what I did was use the same ruler and determined that that was nine and uh, about nine inches. So if you take uh, one to seven eighths, one and three quarters times five, which would be one, two, three, four, five again, we're gonna come out with that nine inches. We had to determine this line here, which is not exactly straight, but what I'm doing is laying these out to either blank them off or know where to blank them off to and spray in between them or tape them off. Don't know exactly at this present moment what I want to do, but you can tell by my markings that, uh, and this comes all the way to the back here, to this line here is where it will stop the paint will stop here and go across. So, uh, again, to get these things straight, you lay this on here, you lay out your inch and three quarters, and you determine a straight line, and you mark around. It's not easy, guys. This is not an easy thing. But you go around that, you lay that on there. When With one person, this is not easy, but you draw around that uh, cardboard. So, that's how we did that. Now all we gotta do is do the bottom. One of the things I have determined after looking at the devil, let me get around on this side. You see these bumps on here? Well, then guess what actually fits right there on those bumps? The devil. I am not going to try to cut around those, whatever these things are. I have determined that I'm going to cut those off. Cut them smooth to the surface. Sorry, but uh, it's, it would be a lot easier to, to put this thing on there without that bumps. So that's what, these are gonna go away with an X-Acto knife or a uh, Dremel tool. I've got a Dremel tool. I think I'll ground them to a certain place and then just sand them smooth. So anyway, there we go with what we're going to do with this devil. Another thing, Kelly Graphics tail, his little tail here, you can see it, his tail, it went all the way to the back and in the picture it doesn't go that far so I've cut his tail off and I will be grafting the little sharp end on uh, after the fact, after I put this piece on I'll be doing the tail piece. Anyway. Back to you when I do well, something well, else. Uh, I've done the uh, striping on the, the engine pods on the bottom, and now I was looking at the good old devil here to put him on. The problem is, is that Cali graphics, they're not exactly the same scale as the one on the real airplane. Uh, close, but... Uh, the devil's, if you look at this picture here, you see where his legs are? They're all the way down on, on this part here. Well, if you put him up there to where that works, uh, this part up here is not up where it's supposed to be in the picture. You see where, where that's supposed to be way up on the top of the fuse? 
So if you put that up on the top of the fuse, then you're real short down here on the bottom. So I've got a decision to make. I think what I'll do, as I told you, I was gonna remove these two uh, bumps. Uh, if you can see them, there's the other one. So I've got to figure out where exactly I'm going to put this in relation to correctness, the best correctness. It would be somewhere like that, guys, to, uh, I would think. So maybe I'm gonna miss this bump here and I only have to take one out, but I don't wanna take them out unless I know where. So uh, just a little bit of heads up on these graphics. They're great graphics, but uh, I don't know who laid them out, but uh, close, but not uh, exact. Okay, so here is what I have finally came out with. Instead of trying to mount him like the picture, like the original jet, it's either if I mount him real low like that, the head's wrong in the picture. So I'm going to mount the head up here where it shows to be, if you can see, up here high. And then that way, this is, the top part is up closer to where it should be. And I've cut the leg off here around the wing. And that way I only have to remove one of those bumps that is behind the old devil right here. So that's the plan, guys. Um, it's, it's close, but it's not like the picture, but that's the only thing I can see to do uh, to come out and be somewhere right. So I've, I've decided to put it up higher and not worry about the bottom part where it should be. Okay, so we had to remove the little air scoop here on the back one. I did that with my Dremel. This is a Craftsman, but most people call it, I call it a Dremel. Some people call it a Dremel. Uh, whatever you want to call it, a rotary tool. Sand, uh, take it down with that, uh, I've got that round uh, sander and it removed it very nicely. Now what I will do is I'll finish it off with sandpaper to, to get it exactly smooth so we don't have any bumps or whatever. But that's how I took that off with, with this tool. Now what, what I will do is use some sandpaper and get it smooth. Okay, after Papa did his thing, uh, this is what it looks like. Uh, the old devil is in the right place here, but he's kind of off down here, but that's the best I could do. Uh, I definitely recommend if you do this to remove that that bump. It's, it's a lot easier to try to put this on it without that bump. Uh, fit it to the fuse, get it where you want first before you stick it. But uh, pretty much uh, come out to be uh, there. I'm gonna do something with this tail part now uh, because the graphics on the tail is all the way back to the end and in the picture it's only to the, about to the end of the, and the cell on the, uh, that the cell right there. So we'll see what I can do with that. Okay, as I said, I was gonna do something with the tail to make it more like the picture and that's the way it come out to be. I just cut it off and just guess where I wanted it to be and that's how it come out. So one side done, uh, looks pretty good I believe. Uh, turn it this way and let you look at a long view, but uh, not bad. Okay guys, after cutting the old devil out again and fitting him to where he goes, I will be removing the other two bumps here because he's right there with those bumps. So back to the Dremel tool. And as soon as I get those off, we'll be putting the old devil on this side. Okay, so Papa's got all the graphics on the airplane. Uh, both sides uh, looks pretty good. What we do here now, we take this over to Wes's and we will do the invasion stripes with the airbrushing. Then after we finish the paint, Papa will do the dots and then we will replace the landing gear and we're finished. Ready for Joe Nall. So next time you see this one, we'll be at Wes's uh, doing the painting.
It's hard to do the walk around on both sides so you can use see both sides to see what it looks like. Okay, guys. Okay, so Papa told you that he was going to take this jet over to Wesley and we were going to do some airbrushing, but unfortunately, Wesley cannot get to the brushing, so it'll probably be the last thing we do. So Papa has been doing his Papa dots. So if you can tell, the devil's on there. You can see the dots, hopefully. And again, guys, what I use is this... Uh, Zig pin, okay, with the the end that says it is a five millimeter in. See it there? See there? Zig Rider. I think you can get these at any of the hobby stores, like like uh, Hobby Lobby or somebody like that. Zig Rider. So that's how I do the dots on the thing, as you can see in here. Uh, so anyway, uh, if you can tell what, the, what it looks like when I get through with it, get close enough to it. Where I don't do that, I use a Sharpie right here on the end. You see this right here? This is a Sharpie, if I can get it. Right here where it's hard plastic, I do a Sharpie right there. And then another thing I do is that I'm gonna swing the jet around here in just a moment. I'm gonna show you these. Uh, I fill in these uh, little holes right here with black, just to give you an idea. And I, the door excesses, I put little dots on those. You can see those right there, hopefully. And then where we put the jet together, I'm gonna to swing again, sorry guys, and I'm gonna stand up, or try to stand up. Back here on the, where, where, where the jet is put together, you can see where I use a Sharpie right here, and look like it was bolted down. Give you a little few ideas what I do there. Get the idea, guys, even right here. So, anyway, Papa's gonna keep dotting. You can get the idea. Uh, you, if you, you watch some videos, I mean, it's kind of like drying paint if you watch me put the dots on here, guys. But uh, that's what we're doing at the present moment. I'll show you the other wing. Let me swing that around just a moment. We'll show you what the wing looks like dotted. Now, I, I haven't dotted over here where we're going to do the, do the striping, the invasion stripes. But if you can see from where the... On out on the wing, you can see the dots as we go. You can see what I do here on these kind of things here in the in the uh, uh, excess panels here. I'm gonna put a dot there. So anyway, okay, uh, easy peasy. Well, so we're here to painting the stripes on the wings, as I said in the previous as I was going through that we were going to use the uh, airbrush. Unfortunately that I'm gonna change my mind and we're gonna try it this way. So if you can see guys, what I've done is I've lined out the three straps that's gonna be white and blanked off the two <coughs> that's gonna be black. Um, so that's the plan. So we'll see how this works. I bought the same type of paint that we had well, being flat white and flat black. So we're going to try that. Uh, first I'm going to remove this uh, link so I don't spray it. I don't care about the servo. And we'll see how this works. Good luck hey, everybody. So we pulled the, all the covering off and this is what we got. A little over spray here but that can be touched up. Uh, let this dry As you can tell somewhere in here. It's not dry yet um, 
come back, spray the black. What I think I'll do is do all the white, let it dry, and see if I can't use the uh, one, one, uh, the problem is, is keeping it all blanked off so it don't overspray on the black. So anyway, good try, don't have a problem. Uh, it's a lot easier than taping everything off. Uh, so anyway. I'm so we lighting. taped off the top of the wing. Uh, we put our cardboard over the black part and we sprayed it. Now we're gonna see how okay. it come out. Really rather pleased guys. Uh, gonna spend a hell of a lot more time doing what I was doing but uh, overall for the effort to I could have spent three times as much time taping off and all that, but I have a little cleanup to do when I do the black, but not too bad. Okay, so we finished all the white on the bottoms and the tops. I am using the wall safe scotch tape that I found in the uh, school section. I have experienced a little bit of the paint coming off but not bad. I actually run a stripe there and it's and the paint did not did a wonderful job as far as lining this out. Got, got a little bit of but for the overall what I'm doing uh, the overall detachment of the paint's not bad guys. See I got a little bit right there. But I'll take it won't take that much to repair it and uh, so you can see here I did not uh, had a piece of cardboard here not a tape so the cardboard it kind of sprays underneath but you know guy this is a military jet they're not the most pristine things in the world so I'll take what I get all right the next step will be the pods to the, do the white on the pods the last thing I will do with a rattle can, I'm rattle canning this guys, will be the black. Uh, the next step was filling in between the uh, white stripes on the wing, the black. Uh, I'm very pleased with that. Guys, after you let the white dry, you just tape it off and uh, make sure you don't spray the white. I mean, it's kind of simple that way. So uh, that, there's your black, uh, black and white stripes on the on the wings and they look pretty much the same on the bottom so uh, now we'll work on the uh, pods on the side and uh, probably show you a little bit more of the taping off before I spray paint on these things so uh, that'll be all you guys out there in RC land we're doing the pods now as you can tell I have taped off where I don't want to go past and then I have made cardboard for the spacing on the two black ones we're going to be playing white in all three of these spaces so we've taped off that plus over here on the other side and pop, 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 pop is probably going to be holding that down and uh, because the cardboard is so stiff to make sure that we kind of not over spray but anyway that's how you do the top one so we're going to spray it with hey, the guys the uh, I pull peel back the two uh, hard boards that I had made, and, and see you can see where the they came out. This is kind of like your parents' old saying, "No, not the one about if everybody jumps off a bridge," or not the one that my dad always used to say, "Keep your pecker in your pocket unless you want to take the responsibility." Not that one. But that uh, old thing is, is it was easy everybody to be doing it. Well, that's one of these projects. If it was easy, everybody be doing it. So again, you gotta take your time and prep. Uh, so you can see what we did here. So we'll let it dry a little longer and then we'll take the paint off the paper off. Okay, so we peeled the paper off and this is what we got. I'm starting to think that I don't care what kind of tape that you use, that you're going to get 
some of this problems of peeling it up when you pull off the tape because I'm just getting to the point that I don't think some of this tape, the some of the paint adheres to the foam that well and you're going to get some pulls as you can tell but that's an easy fix so here that's what it looks like uh, well now we get to do the other side on the top then we get to do the bottom and isn't it fun so anyway uh, there's how Papa did that one you know here it looks on this side I really don't uh, you know military jets okay hey guys we finished the top on one side of the invasion stripe still hadn't done the bottom but if you can tell I did get some removal of the paint no big deal I can come back and pass that up what I've done on this side over here as you can see I painted the white then I paint one black at a time and tape it off and using the the, the cardboard that I used for this first taping off uh, invasion stripe guys uh, I would recommend that's not a first time try for some people these are a royal pain a royal pain so if you unless you just really want invasion stripes unless you have a better way than Papa knows how Mm, I'd pick something out a little better, better than invasion stripes. So we got the, the, the bottom of this uh, pod is already done here. We're working on the other side. We've taped it off for the painting the white. And now we're letting the white dry. And then we'll be pulling the two uh, blanket off to just, and we're through after this. Yeah, we're, we're to the, almost to the end guys. So I'll be back to you when we paint the black. So we've let the black dry. We've, uh, we're starting to pull back the, where I've covered the white. You can see I did that with the cardboard. Or maybe not every once in a while I'm letting the photo go. But anyway, you know, here we go. We undo the tape, fold it down, blocking that. We've got some tape here in the middle. Just blocking the white in the front. It's kind of hard for me to peel it off and hold the camera at the same time, guys, so. Uh, okay, I'll so we that. pulled it off, and this is what it looks like. Again, I lost a little paint here, but not too bad. We'll take, we'll spray some paint in a can and use a brush, and we'll clean that up, and we're pretty well to the end of this, guys. So I'll turn the jet over after we get it, after I finish and give you a final look. Okay, guys, last thing. Old, old Papa couldn't resist putting some nose art on the airplane, so it's quite small, so it's hard to be detailed on this, like the uh, ones on the shirts, but anyway, uh, there's a devil girl for you on the side. Uh, kind of come out, you know, she's quite small, but anywhere, Papa put her on there. So that's it. It's through. Hope you guys enjoy it.